Pamela leaves her signature with Poison Ink. Here's your relook at the Mattel DC Universe Signature Collection Poison Ivy. Poison Ivy is a viewer's request. I initially looked at this figure way back on November 21st, 2012. To mark the beginning of this review, the first thing we always do is first figure out how tall these figures stand. It's a service I'm more than happy to oblige. Yes, this was a viewer's request. Somebody had asked me if I would consider going back and having a look at some of the signature collection figures, specifically Poison Ivy. And like I said, I'm more than happy to oblige. Did I not even hit hold? I didn't even hit hold. Let's try that again. I'm talking away. Yes, this was, like I said, a viewer's request. I'm more than happy, like I said, to oblige. If I still have the figures, and I just so happen still to have Poison Ivy, let's try that again. According to the top of her head, this red-haired vixen stands 6.3 inches in height. And that in centimeters works out to be just a little over 16 centimeters. 16.2 to be exact. Just for fun, we can bring in some size comparisons. This is just a regular Batman. I mean, we've seen this Batman countless times before, simply just different change of paint. Sometimes it's blue and grays, and in this case it happens to be uh, black and gray. Still love these, these figures, but unfortunately some of the joints, as we will discuss in a second... Ooh, that sounds like that's going to go somewhere. Yeah, yeah, it's going to go somewhere. And then, of course, there's a big space right here, so we can bring in a Collect and Connect figure, just so I'm going to bring in Bane. We're kind of recreating the cast of Batman and Robin, just a little bit better. Jeep Swanson, I believe, was his name, the wrestler who portrayed Bane. <laughs> Not so much. Wasn't a big fan of that Bane. But here is Batman. A standard male-sized body. Next to Poison Ivy, who's a little bit smaller in scale. And then next to her, the much towering, taller, Collect and Connect Bane. There you go. Full disclosure, I... The figure didn't come with that clear display stand that happens to be a NECA stand. Not that she would really literally stand on it anyways. The peg hole on the undersides of these feet are so incredibly large that it makes next to impossible to find a stand. I'm sure I could probably find one of those DC Universe stands. I know they're kicking around here somewhere and it probably would be a little bit more accommodating for this particular figure. The figure right out the gate, or right out the tote, unfortunately where I was storing these, has developed extremely loose legs, which is usually one of the things that is the, uh, the default, I think, to many of the DC Universe figures. They just seem to develop, just by age and age alone, even if you're not somebody that plays with these figures, they just, they just seem to develop these loose legs, and it just makes me so sad. A remedy to that, I'm I'm thinking I could possibly pop the legs off of the ball joint or see if I can put in some additional floor polish or something in there to stiffen up those joints. It's really only just back and forth. The legs going out seem still relatively tight. I'm going to see if I can fix that. All around, I really do like this particular Poison Ivy, and the last thing I certainly would want to have to contend with is rather loose joints. Now, this is a signature version of, of Poison Ivy, so essentially what it is, is, I believe at the time it was a Maddie Collector, kind of not subscription-based, but it was certainly something you go onto their website and you can order. I didn't go that route. I think ultimately I just picked up a lot of these through eBay and aftermarket, paying, of course, the prices that would go with aftermarket. Oh, that makes me so sad. But what we end up resulting in is we get ourselves a really neat Poison Ivy, one of my personal favorites. So when I did get a viewer request to go back and have a look at this particular Poison Ivy, I was more than happy to oblige. She does come with a couple of accessories, some of which you probably already recognize from before. Uh, the Batman recent uh, DC Universe, or Signature Collection Batman 80 Years, I believe that was the title, came with the Joker with the squirting uh, flower, which really didn't actually squirt. There was the Poison Ivy, and then there was the 89 Batman. Uh, this particular Poison Ivy did have the same carryover vines as that particular Poison Ivy, which I guess would, uh, of course, come after the fact. This figure would predate that. So these vines are something of which you can remove off the figure if you wanted to. They're on one of her legs, and they're on both of her arms. I don't think there was, I don't think there was vines on the other leg. I think it was only on the one side, because this is the only ones that I had still in the baggie where I kept a lot of the uh, the figure's accessories. Having a look at her face, though, really nice looking face. 
this particular poison ivy of course does go with a more greenish tint chlorophyll colored skin and i really do quite like that looking at it it almost at times looks like you're feeling you're looking at it almost as if it's translucent <laughs> see i can't run my finger behind it and you're gonna see it but it definitely has what looks to be if something if they ran a light source behind it for example you would be almost not surprised to see that the light would go right through it and i know that's simply not the case the head sculpt is generally quite pretty uh, one of my favorite things about this particular figure of course excluding the coloring of her skin is her hair her hair is fantastic on this probably one of the best hair sculpts for a dc signature or universe for that matter uh, figure i'm really really happy with how this one turned out not only is the coloring on par with what you would expect from poison ivy but i like also the in additional inclusions of all these leaves i think that's really a neat touch not only does it kind of start at the top almost as if she's got like a little uh I don't know what you would call it, like a little hairpin, for example, of leaves, but she also has all these just uh, sporadic placement of leaves all across her hair. I'm not one that would be able to pinpoint what specific leaf that is, but uh, she definitely has a whole bunch of leaves. There's one, two, there's three, there's four, five, six, and seven. And I've missed some on the other side there as well. Really like the hair. That is definitely one of my favorite aspects of this particular figure. The face is generally quite pretty, though from the side it does look like her face is really, really long, and it looks like she's also got a squished face. Now, I don't suspect that you'll probably be displaying your figure like this anyways, you'll probably be looking at her straight on, and straight on, like I said, even from certain angles, she's a really pretty looking face. She's got herself a leaf choker, I used to know people that wore chokers back in the day, that was a really big 90s thing was wearing chokers, not necessarily made out of leaves, mind you, but chokers nonetheless. She's got something very familiar to the 80, uh, Batman 80s uh, DC Signature Collection Poison Ivy, the one that we just recently had a look at, though I do feel like the leaf sculpts on the sides are different from that particular Poison Ivy. Uh, one disappointing aspect of this particular figure is that she does have close fists. They didn't give you any other option. And the fists can't help but make me look at the hands and think they're too small for the rest of the body. Proportionately, it seems like the hands just are way too small. I wish, if anything, they could have given her relaxed hands. I mean, after all, she doesn't come with accessories anyways. So a pair of relaxed hands, I think, could have been perfectly fine with, a pit, uh, with this particular figure. As we continue our way down, continuing to see the green-tinted skin, we get down to her little tootsies. They have actually painted in the nails, not the cleanest, mind you. One nail, one large toenail right there has made its way into the next person in line. The king is sort of overthrowing the rest of the kingdom with this paint that's blobbed onto the next toe in, in the uh, sequence there. The feet are actually quite good, and to their credit, at least they painted in the, the toenails. They could have just easily left those off. Um, but good, good job, despite being messy, yes... Good job at least, at the very least, that they put painted in toenails like that. For the figure's articulation, it's on par with what you would expect. She's very limited, unfortunately, when it comes to her head posability. Just likely chalked up to the fact that her hair gets in the way of everything. Moving her hair back and forth, at least they give you enough of a gap. Like if I tilt the head up this way, you can see how much clearance they give you. So it probably would be best advised if you tilt the head forward first and then rotate the head to whichever direction you want it to go with. Uh, the arms hinge outward. That would be the case on both arms. You get yourself a 90 degree angle, and even actually past where a 90 degree angle would stop, you get continuous posability happening there. The arms move forward, they move back. She has a swivel at the bicep. She has a single bend at the elbow. Unfortunately, she doesn't have a swivel at the, th at the forearm, all the swiveling is happening right at the top here. And she can also rotate her hand all the way around. Just disappointed, really, with those hands. Not that it's going to ruin the rest of my day, but... Gosh, that really is a disappointing-looking hand. She does have a waist swivel. And the swivel in the waist is rather awkward because it's way at the top here. Sure, you can swivel the waist, but it just ends up looking like a magician has started to uh, cut her way through or cut their way through with a saw. It looks like she's kind of disjointed, which is a bit disappointing. Then we get down to the legs. 
The legs are a finicky batch. Uh, they do hinge out, but unfortunately, like I said, over the time of having this figure and barely doing anything with it, she's developed these extremely loose legs. That really makes me sad. She has a swivel at the thigh, also really, really loose, and she's also got developing loose knees. She's loose all around. That doesn't sound too good. Not a bad looking figure. Unfortunately, the way that she's made up, it's just, unfortunately, again, the, the test of time with a lot of these DC Universe figures, as great as they have been, and love a lot of these, including Poison Ivy here, unfortunately, over the time of having them, they've just naturally started to develop loose legs. Specifically, loose legs. Loose arms wasn't so much the big issue with a lot of the figures that I have, but loose legs definitely can become problematic. They have gotten away with the split leg, if in case you don't know what I'm talking about right there. We'll bring Batman in once again. Remember these hinges where you had this awkward hinge? This usually developed loose legs as well. Batman's starting to see it himself. Poison Ivy doesn't have that, but she still has those same nagging problems of really, really loose legs. Except for that, other than that, I quite love this figure. And when somebody had asked me if I would be considering to go back and re-review it, I was pleased as punch to go back and have a look at one of my all-time favorite Poison Ivies yet again. Having still moderate success selling the DC Universe figures and the brand itself, Matty Collector came up with a clever idea. Why don't we keep all of the figures off the shelves in brick and mortar stores and instead sell them online? We'll give them different packaging and release figures that collectors have never seen uh, never seen before, but certainly would want to add to their collection. And let's sell them directly from our website, which is fine and good. And it did give us the opportunity to get characters like Black Mask, Poison Ivy, and Mirror Master, to name a few. But it did also alienate Canadian collectors like myself. Sure, I could pick up things that I wanted to get on Matty Collector and still continue on my love for DC Universe, but it came with the price of paying the 30 or so dollars it was for the signature collection figures, plus the exchange rate, plus the shipping charge, and in many cases, the brokerage fees that were tied up with that as well. That usually resulted in a $30 figure getting closer to around the $65 to $70 price point. Ouch. So I didn't pick up a lot of the, the signature collection figures directly from Matty Collector, and instead I took my chances and found them on eBay. Some of the prices where the figures were about the same as what I would expect to get from Matty Collector, so unfortunately I still did pay through the roof to get a lot of the figures that I end up having in my collection. The trade-off is, I don't know if I would say that they're signature figures, they really don't have much in the way of bells and whistles, I mean... Mirror Master came with his guns, Black Mask, I don't even recall what he came with, and Poison Ivy came with the vines wrapped around her arms. To the point at least in the credit of Poison Ivy, I do like the tinted green color skin that they managed to put on this figure. The figure's head sculpt is really quite pretty, and she has, in my opinion still, one of the best hair sculpts of all the signature collection figures that we've, we've gotten up to this point. Unfortunately, through the time of owning these figures, a lot of the joints have loosened. So even some of my all-time favorites that I've kept in my collection, I have to be now opening up in the totes to find and discover that even though I kept them meticulously uh, you know, stored away and protected, it didn't protect Father Time from getting in there and loosening up the joints on a lot of these figures. And as you certainly saw here with the review of Poison Ivy, her poor, poor legs is barely enough to keep her standing upright. Why couldn't they have also given her some relaxed hands? So at the very least, if I wanted to pull off the look that I know I'm failing at right now here in Final Looks, of having her looking as if she's running her fingers through her hair, instead it looks like she's making a muscle or she wants somebody to smell her armpits. Did you manage to pick up this figure for yourself? Let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of the Signature Collection Poison Ivy. It is still one of my favorite Poison Ivies. It's just a sad, sad state what time has done to poor Poison Ivy here. Uh, also, again, a big thank you to the viewer that had asked if I would go back and have a look at the Signature Collection Poison Ivy. If there's certainly anything that you guys would like to see me re-review on this channel, by all means, drop me a line. You can let me know in the comments section down below, or you can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and even on Instagram. All those links to my social media outlets will be down below in the video description. If you are also new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and keep your peepers peeled because there's going to be a whole bunch of new videos coming onto this channel as well as some personal favorites, some classics, if you will, as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.